Hey Victory family, just another update for you today as we're going into the Christmas season and a lot of stuff has shifted locally, provincially, federally as we're continuing to walk through the second wave apparently has arrived and we as a church have been through some really intense stuff. I just want you to know today that we are praying for you consistently, you and your family. God knows exactly what you're going through and he cares and he sees and he loves you and he has an answer. So today I just want to touch base on a couple of the political things, the governmental things that we're dealing with right now, just so that we're all on the same page. I know a lot of people have been hearing little bits here and there about what is legal, what is not legal, what are we doing? What are we not doing? And so we just wanted to address it in one place. We want to put things in place. We want to uh, state our position. And then we just want to stop talking about it for a while. We want to just focus on God. We want to go through the Christmas season honoring him and lifting him high and not having to redig this stuff all the time. So with that in mind, let's just dig into a little bit the journey that we have been on. Starting in March, as you know, the entire province kind of shut down. We went into what was supposed to be a two week close down and, and pause and it sort of went on into June. Um, and it was manageable, it was doable, and it was semi understandable because of the modeling of what they thought was coming. And really the potential was for, you know, up to the tens of thousands of people dying in our province alone, which is a very big threat. It's a very big concern. And so um, as time progressed, we know that the modeling shifted and some of the lowest bottom end modeling showed a a less uh, impactful situation and we have as we've walked through it come into an even less than that situation and so as that has shifted and as the churches have come into um, functioning a little bit more again as businesses and schools and all of that have begun functioning again it's from the perspective that we know it's not what we thought it was in March. And so what we are dealing with is the, the cost within families, within businesses, the internal anguish, the mental stuff, the emotional hardship, people who are literally like losing their will to live as healthy people due to the hardships that are brought on by the situation. And so where do we come in as a church? We have to just focus on what it is that God has called us to do and be. We serve him first and then he's called us to serve others. And so people are, you know, shouting about their freedoms and their liberties and their rights. And I will get into a little bit of that. But the reality is in the springtime, um, moving into a state of emergency, that was the expectation is this could be really, really bad. Our law does allow for the health service area to kind of overrule in order to protect us. And so when they can reasonably assert that there is a danger to life, um, then it does kind of put everything else under uh, subjugation. So that was a reasonable thing in the springtime and that reasonable area has shifted. So now moving forward, we know that it's still a risk. We know that it's still there, but we also know that there's many more aspects of life than just the health of certain individuals and just a virus. We know that the, the soul matters, that the spirit matters, that people's mental health matters, their financial health matters, their ability to care for their children matters, um, their ability to care for seniors matters. Matters. All of this stuff, it's its part of a society. You know, I love how the Salvation Army puts it, a heart to God and a hand to man. And that's really what we're called to do. We have our relationship with God. And from that relationship, we pour out to men. Andre Schutten, who's uh, from ARPA, he's a lawyer from there. He works all the time in Ottawa, just defending uh, constitutional rights. But he says the, the necessity for the church is to follow the commands of God. And the commands of God, biblically speaking, are far broader than just delivering a message on a Sunday morning or a midweek online thing. It is about ministering to people. And there's a practical side of that that is biblically mandated. So just to give you a few examples, I won't give you the scripture references, but he's got uh, 14 listed in an article that he wrote for the Gospel Coalition. And he says, God commands us to, for instance, give tender care to our aging parents, to tend to the sick, to visit and encourage the lonely, to gather corporately to worship, to celebrate the sacraments together, to comfort the mourning, to rejoice with those who rejoice, to love the orphan, or James 1.27 says, visit the orphan and the widow. To share the gospel, to provide for others, to show hospitality, to assist the addict, to feed the hungry, to care for the emotionally distressed. So these are some of the things that 
as believers, this is what God calls us to do. So to find the creative ways to just keep everything online and to stay isolated from one another, these are the things that God has called us to do. And so for a season, we have tried to adapt. We have tried to uh, minister. The first few months, it was actually fun for a while. It was just like we were seeing people gathering as families and they're gathering around their TVs and they're watching online and they're, they're doing stuff. But as the months go on, and as uh, the CERB payments run out, and as we're in month seven, eight of being unemployed, and as people are seriously wondering if they're gonna be able to keep their homes or stay uh, in their apartments, where people are wondering if there's any point to living at all, it starts to become a cry on the inside of us that comes from the heart of God, that we are called to minister to people, that the church is here, we actually carry an answer. We carry life, we carry hope, we carry joy. And so we have to begin um, to press into that. There's the, the ministering to the public side of it, and then there's what happens in the house of God here. And so the two things kind of go together because we have been given by our Canadian government. This is our, the, you know, part of why I love being a Canadian is what is included in the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. And part of that is freedom of religion. And I'll get into that in a little bit, the breakdown of what is included as my right as a Canadian. And that's a God-given thing. And so when that's built in that's how we serve other people but it's it comes out of that place of who we are as a community and how we serve God together so when we come into the house of worship we have protected rights and there's some big things that are part of our Constitution both federally and provincially that are protected by law and the only time that they can be overrun is when there is the kind of state of emergency where the government can prove or the health department can prove that there is a radical risk to life. And it is on them to prove why we should stay inside versus on us to prove why we can't go out. There is a statement that I got from a lawyer that I talked to, and I'm gonna share a little bit with you again. Uh, the Justice Council is very good at clarifying what is necessary, what is legal, what is right. It's a phrase called lawfully unlawful. So what it means is that even though it appears that there are laws that are in place, there are higher laws that supersede sometimes the rules. So it's like if you have a babysitter watching your kids and the babysitter says, this is what's going on. This is what you have to do. This is what you're not allowed to do. Well, if mom comes home and mom says, actually, that's not the house rule, you can't enforce that. Our kids don't do that. Then the babysitter kind of gets over overruled by a higher authority. So lawfully unlawful means we're appealing to a higher authority. So everything that I'm about to say to you is we're submitting to a higher authority. We are not going against the authorities of the land. We are just going up the chain a little bit. Everybody has their place where this is the line that I won't cross anymore. And let me just um, get a little bit pastory on you right now. If you are not aware of the fact that our Christian and religious freedoms are being sucked out the backside right now, you're, you're missing the point. It's not about masking, it's not about singing, it's not about Corona. While we are doing this, there are laws on the federal level about things like conversion therapy, Bill C-6, which is in debate right now, that literally can make certain levels of counseling and pastoral counseling and pastoral care illegal. We're dealing with euthanasia laws that are being slid through right in this very week, actually, Bill C-7, and you should be aware of that. We need to be writing letters, but there's some amendments. We already know that euthanization is legal in Canada, but they're, they're wanting to loosen it up. They're wanting to include uh, people with mental disabilities. They're wanting to cut off the wait periods. They're wanting to put in place things like you can, you can pre-plan that if it gets to a certain point, just kill me. And we know as believers, we believe in the sanctity of life at every stage. And so this is the stuff that's going on and our religious freedoms are being you know, tied to all of that. And so we've got to decide at what point we say that's enough. What point do we say, I, I, I can't bow to that. And so for us as a church, we've just said kind of our indicator point is going to be singing. Singing to God is a non-negotiable to us. And so a lot of people have said, well, in our current situation, why can't you just like read poetry or just read a psalm or something like that? Why can't you just watch a worship video, you know, something like that for two weeks and just ride this thing out? Well, it's because we have been commanded by a higher kingdom. And so again, the same way the word talks about wives submitting to your husbands, but if your husband asks you to do something that is against God's law, 
that's the time that you don't submit. You submit to the higher authority of God in your life, his rulership. That's the levels of authority. And so with this, we have a God who asks us to sing. And so you know, we're going to put our line in the sand somewhere. There's got to be a point for every believer and every church where you say, that's too far. I won't bow. And so for us, verses like Ephesians 5, 19, speak to one another in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. To one another, it's built right into the command. Psalm 100 talks about enter his gates with thanksgiving, enter his courts in praise. It says, it says, come before his presence with singing. Psalm 96 says, sing to the Lord all the earth. There are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of verses about singing to the Lord. And we know that David, King David, who wrote hundreds of melodies and, and poems, and he was a worshiper. He was a man after God's heart. So God loves this. And so for us, that's something that we feel very strongly about. We feel like it is mandated in the word. And so we've got to put our line somewhere. Daniel didn't say, you know, when, when the king said this law came through, you can only pray, uh, you can only worship me. You can only worship the, he, he prayed as was his custom three times a day. He just did it. When we know Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were told to bow, every time you hear the sound of the instruments play and you see the image, you need to bow. They said, we can't bow. We, we can't bow. We just, they're not saying everybody else shouldn't. They're just saying we can't bow. What's our line? What's the place where we will say, I won't bow. I can't bow. Every believer has to find that place. So we have to understand in talking to uh, constitutional lawyers and talking to freedom lawyers, there is a big issue at play here. And this is what they are concerned about in what they are seeing is that within the Charter of Rights and Freedoms for Canada, there are four fundamental freedoms. So it's section two of the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Look it up, four fundamental freedoms. So these are not just up for interpretation. They are what they are. And if any government or any agency looks to overrule them, they better have a very good reason why, and it needs to be provable. So the, the freedoms that we are insured are uh, the freedom of conscience and religion, the freedom of thought, belief, opinion, and expression, the freedom of peaceful assembly, and the freedom of association. So the lawyers are saying that actually the church is one of the one groups within the nation that is protected by all four of these. Just the nature of how we gather and what we do and who we serve, we're protected by all four. So if the church lays down right now, it opens the door for all kinds of other freedoms as a nation to be stripped away from us. And they're saying they are ready to go to war on this. They're ready to um, fight. They're ready to stand, but they're having a hard time finding churches that are willing to do it with them, that are willing to stand and, and say, no, we, we will serve God. We have a higher call to serve God. And I know that that's not, you know, publicly appealing. I know that that's not a popular mindset, but we are in this world. We're not of it. We are here to serve this world. We're here to bless. We're here to minister. We're here to offer life. If we are the same as what is, what is twisted and distorted, we can't be the salt and light that we're called to be. And so when we have a governmentally uh, enforced and supported constitution, we have rights and freedoms that are built in there by law and we're unwilling to stand for them, we are actually saying we would rather just drift. We are willing to give up our freedoms. And if we think that this doesn't have anything to do with this, we really need to do some research through history and see what has happened in other nations when the church has refused to stand. Canada is called to bring healing to the nations. How will we ever do that if we can't bring healing within our own cities, bring healing within our own provinces, bring healing within our own nations? And again, people are saying, well, you know, well, you guys had an outbreak, so obviously you did things wrong. We did not do anything wrong. But we have been through it and we can see what kind of suffering is going on. It's been very enlightening to find out how what the government intends to be happening and what's happening on the ground are two very, very different things. There is a lot of injustice happening right now. People who have gone um, you know, and done everything right, got tested, um, did their quarantine, stayed away from everybody, did their contact tracing, all of that, and then go to go back to work and are told there's no, there's no place for you until you can prove that you're negative. Well, we're in direct contact with the Minister of Health's office and we have paperwork to prove otherwise. What you're entitled to as a, as a person in this, in this province is different than what the common um, ideas are out there. The idea that it's going to be spread everywhere that you go. An outbreak stays on the books 
28 days after the last person you know, has it. So you can be marked as an outbreak site and nobody anywhere close to you even has it. It's just it's just the way it's working out. Issues that people are facing with work, the quarantining, what is mandated by government and what is being done on the ground or being told to people um, on the ground, they don't match up all the time. And so only by digging into that do we see where the injustice is. Well, standing for uh, freedom and justice is part of the church's mandate. We, we know that God's foundation is built on justice and righteousness. That's the foundation of his throne. And so where things are not right, the church has a responsibility to use her voice. Where things are not just, the church has a responsibility to use her voice. That's what God has given us an opportunity to do. So having gone through an outbreak, we don't feel badly that it happened to us. We feel empowered now that maybe we can help other people because now we know. Now we understand what this is really like out there. So again, talking to the Justice Center for Constitutional Freedoms, um, a great group of lawyers who are ready to stand and fight with you and particularly for the freedoms that are part of our constitutional guarantee as a nation and as citizens of this nation. So one of our biggest issues right now is navigating through the misinformation, the stuff that's out there, um, the things that are of this realm, the things that are right in front of us, and then lining it up next to God's word. What does he actually say? What is truth? We know historically the church has been some of the best people to come into places of emergency, into places of brokenness, who have served the the sick, the dying, the hurting. We know people like Mother Teresa who went in uh, when AIDS was just everywhere, when she was dealing with people dying in back alleys in India, and she just held them while they were dying. She loved people as they were leaving this earth. She cared and she ministered through grief. There's stories of people all through history who have run into the fire and cared and ministered. That's really what the church is called to do. And so so this move to kind of keep everybody pulled back and isolated from one another, it's dangerous to who God's called us to be. So I want to encourage you on a couple levels, get the heart of God on this. I'm, I'm never going to tell anybody what you should do, but I'm going to tell you, you need to know where your line is and what you won't do. What it is that God has said, this is, this is your boundary line. Do some actual practical research, check the websites, dig a little deeper on the um, alberta.gov.ca site, um, the actual COVID site. The numbers are there. You will see for yourself what's actually going on. I think it's very wise for us to write letters. Our government leaders need to hear from us. They need to know that we care. Whether it's federally, we've got the email address for our uh, member of parliament locally here. We've got the email addresses for our local MLAs who are both ministers in um, the legislative assembly. We've got um, email addresses for Dr. Hinshaw, for Premier Kenny. They need to hear from us. They need to hear from the church. They need to know that you firstly pray for them that you care about them, you care about their families, you also are holding them responsible to, to stand and to fight for freedom and to fight for what is constitutionally correct and what's righteous in God's eyes. And I wanna just encourage you with every letter that you write, every phone call that you make, be respectful, be honoring, be, uh, you know, submit to the authorities of the land. They are here to serve and they are doing the best they can. I can't imagine how hard it is to lead on that level in this season. We wanna honor them. We want to um, bless them. We wanna pray for them. We wanna serve them in whatever way we can. But we also wanna stand firm on the things that God has locked us into, the things that are on his heart, the things that he has called us to do and be. If you have been one of the families that you feel like there has been an unusual level of hardship in this, uh, even going through COVID, some of the quarantine measures, some of the phone calls, some of the phone calls you've gotten from AHS, um, different people, there have been some really non-acceptable things that have been said on some of the phone calls, some bullying, some threatening that has gone on and having chased that down a little bit and checked with our government leaders. It is not even, some of the stuff that has been said is not even true. It's not even enforceable. It's not even right. It's not what they intended. So if you feel like you have been struggling with, this is not just, this is not right, you can contact me directly here at the church and I will give you contact information for a lawyer who's dealing with some of this stuff directly. But if you want more general information about what is your rights, what are your freedoms, what, what, can you do? What are your options right now? There is going to be an email address as well for the Justice Center. And also we're going to include a website for ARPA Canada. And they're the ones who are dealing with things on a federal level, um, appealing right before judges and 
members of parliament there and, and presenting things according to the law from a faith-based standpoint. So just get engaged, allow your heart to engage. It is up to the church right now to stand and the freedoms that we stand for will affect everybody in this nation for generations to come. So bless you today. I just speak blessing, health and life over your family. And I appeal to you, stand firm in the things that God has called you to love him, love people, be a blessing. Amen. Amen.